take note of that. It's important. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear faithful, this feast of all saints, we can say something very simple like, the reason that you are sitting in this chapel here today, the reason you are physically in these pews, the reason I am physically standing here, is due to the anniversary of today, November the 1st, that 50 years ago, 1970, November the 1st, All Saints Day, was the canonical foundation of the SSPX by Monsignor Cherrier, a bishop of Fribourg, the, the, let's say, the legal establishment of it, the canonical establishment of it. So, of course, today is a 50th anniversary, a time for us to thank God, to, to have a, uh, uh, certainly the, the Mass, the, the sacraments, to have our prayers be filled with thanksgiving that God has given such a wonderful work and such a wonderful founder, let's say, of Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre. You could say it is, it seems miraculous. It seems surprising. If you look at all of the human obstacles, the, the battles, the persecutions, the, the calumnies, the difficulties that Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre faced to found and to run this poor little pathetic organization that is still a work of the Catholic Church. Clearly, it seems miraculous. I mean, now you can see statistically it's miraculous. It's, it's now, today, the 39th largest religious congregation in the world. That's something. That's something. You're, you're, you're in the top 40 largest uh, male religious congregation in the world. That's, that's something we wouldn't have expected 50 years ago. It's growing, it's young, it's spreading across over 70 countries in the world, and many of the other major religious orders are slowly declining, or sometimes quickly declining, or just shutting down. And they have a very high average age. Who would have thought that this would be the case? Of course, as I say, first of all, we must give thanks to, to God, to the Most Holy Trinity, for this work and for providing the world with such, a, such a, a heroic man of Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, who took such amazing steps, steps that surprised the whole church in its time, and even and it was nothing but controversial. And there was so much misinformation out there, of course. But without that, without that heroic fight of Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, we would not be sitting here today. And it's, it's very important because he was very clear, and you can see it in all of his writings. He's saying, I'm not innovating. I'm not making some new doctrine. I'm, I'm teaching what the church has always taught. I'm doing what the church has always done. I just want to transmit. I want to hand down the faith as it was handed down to me. And if we look at the, the history of the last, let's say, 100 years, the last 75 years, especially with the, with the Second Vatican Council. Now that we have the, the hindsight and there are more materials that are published from the, uh, the, the important figures of the last 50 to 75 years, they're, they're saying now uh, things that we did not know before. With, with the hindsight that time gives us, that we can look back calmly and start studying things better, we can see even more the wisdom of Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, the divine guidance that, that providence guided his actions because how else would, would we have come to this point? More and more priests, more and more bishops, even cardinals are now saying, hey, that, that man that way back in time, the one that died you know, 30 years ago, he was on to something, he was right. What he did was a great thing actually. Now that we can look back and now that we can see under this current pontificate, of Pope Francis, we can look back and say, wait, wait a minute. He, he, he saw the cause. He, he saw that there was a problem. He saw that even more than 50 years ago he saw this. And some of these people are, are, are coming late to the, uh, the party, as we say. They're coming later and later, and they're starting to say, wait a minute. These, these people have been attacked. This 
religious congregation gets nothing but abuse and, and, and insults hurled at it for 50 years, it's still growing, it's pointing out the errors, it's trying to hand down the faith, it's trying to work for the salvation of souls. Well, wait, wait a minute, maybe they're onto something. Maybe there is something correct about this. It's sort of, we members of the society, St. Pius they're sort of not sure how to handle this. We've never received praise before. Usually we just get insults and rejection. But God has chosen that people's eyes are starting to be open now. That, that maybe Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre was correct, that there was a crisis, that there is a crisis, that we live in the midst of something just keeps going. We could go on for days talking about the different scandals and the different problems and the different issues, and we'd all leave the chapel filled with depression. Yeah, well, that's not the answer. The answer is, that, yeah, there is clearly some type of uh, uh, problem, a crisis that's affecting Holy Mother Church, not, not the church itself, but the church men, let's say. And people say, well, you know, yeah, there's a, a few problems. No, no, there are some very serious issues. And I can give you one example. Otherwise, we'd be here all day. We can say, what, what points to the health, the health of the, the mystical body? What, what points to the health of the, 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 the church on the earth, to what we call the church militant, those on this earth, what points to a, a healthy, living bride of Christ and the Catholic Church. One of the best ways to measure, one of the best, let's say, metrics of health is the producing of new life. That is to say, the producing of religious vocations. That is to say, male religious, female religious, priests, uh, brothers, uh, monks, nuns. That's one of the, the best metrics of a healthy organism in the Catholic Church. How many vocations? And normally the, the rule, the good rule to keep is 10%. That God calls one out of every 10 young men, one out of every 10 young women back to his service to be dedicated for their lives to, to, the, to the glory of God, to the salvation of souls to maybe the vows of poverty, chastity, obedience, or in some way calls them back into the religious life. One out of every ten. One out of every ten men, one out of every ten women. That, that shows a very healthy, and some, sometimes in the church history it's actually been larger than that, but 10%, 10 is a good number to keep. So we can say, okay, well, you can apply that to any diocese or any, any country in the world. Let's look at this country here. Over 200,000 Catholics in this petite little island country. 200,000. It's not bad. It could be, it should be a heck of a lot more. I'd be happy if it was 2 million, but it's 200,000. What is the percentage of vocations? Are 10% of those uh, persons going into the religious life? If that's the case, and there's 100,000 men, 100,000 women, then we should have uh, around 20,000. We should have about 10,000 priests or brothers and about 10,000 nuns. I think we don't need to think hard at all to know that that's not the case. You don't see 10,000 priests and brothers walking around Singapore. You don't see 10,000 female religious. No, of course not. Not even close. So we're not at 10%. And just in this country, let's say, are we even at 5%? No. Are we even at 1%? No. Are we at one-tenth of 1%? No. Are we at one one-hundredth of 1%? No. We're below that. Can you imagine that a red alarm bell should be banging off uh, on the walls? Nuclear sirens should be going off. Hey, there is a crisis here. If we're not producing one one-hundredth of 1%, of our young men and young women are going into the religious life, that is the surest, it's not the only sign, but that's one of the surest signs that there is some kind of massive problem, massive crisis going on. That somewhere grace is not being transmitted or grace is being offered and not accepted. That materialism or, or simply the loss of faith or the lack of preaching the faith, that there's something wrong yeah, absolutely. And Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre saw this 50 years ago. But 
Can you imagine how that should not be an ulcer of alarm going off in, 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 in the clergy's minds? As I said, we have four vocations from this chapel. It should be 40. That's already a problem. Still, it's a better percentage. It's still a better percentage. But imagine in just a typical diocese to have less than one one hundredth of a percentage point. That should be a cause for, you know, immediately shut down everything. Shut down everything. Have emergency meetings. Don't do anything else until we fix that problem. Because that problem, although the, the effects of it are going to not be seen for a few years, you're seeing this in other countries as well, the same kind of problem. It's not just this country. Many countries, they're talking about, uh, in Ireland, they're publicly saying, that the, the, the hierarchy are saying, we're going to have parishes without priests within a few years. We just don't have any more vocations. Sorry, we're either going to shut down those churches or we're going to develop a liturgy without the priest. We're going to have people come together and pray and then distribute, you know, like vending machines, distribute communion, like it's some kind of joke. They're actually admitting this now. But they're not dealing with the problem. And Archbishop of Marcella Fevin, that's the beauty of, of what he did. That's the glory of what he did. He says, look, there are all kinds of problems we could talk about. But if we don't solve this problem first, not just to bring about vocations, not just to, to work on them, but to actually form priests properly. So the first thing he does, and the main thing he does, is, look, I want good seminaries. I want to create seminaries. His original idea was make seminaries, and that's it just to, to form priests well. That was his main goal. Later on, he started, okay, we need to work on other religious things. Uh, we need to get good sisters and good brothers and schools and, and, and mass centers, and we need to do all these other things, retreats, all these other, uh, let's say, uh, apostolic things to do. But the, his first and crucial, his essential thing was, we need vocations and we need to form them well. So true, so true. And this is why, as I say, it's just one example of many. And that, it's just one clear example. The Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, he understood this. And he, he desired this from the very beginning. You can read it in his writings, in his sermons, in his conference. He says, he says what we have created here is something grafted, or something growing from the, the, the trunk, the tree of the, of the church and producing fruits. It's a, it's a religious a uh, group of priests and, and eventually later nuns and brothers who have common life. They are, they are a fraternity. They are a priestly group of brotherhood and they simply want to live the life of the church. That's all they want to do. They want to spread the Catholic faith. That's what they want to do. Why is this so, uh, so complicated? Why does this draw such attacks? He understood this, that the very heart of it the church will be holy only in relation to the priests being holy. He understood that from the very beginning. Of course, he was in charge of, he had spent a great life as, a, as doing pretty much every possible work you could do as a diocesan priest, then in the religious order, then, then working as a missionary, and then working as a, a papal uh, nuncio, as a, as a bishop, and then later a representative of the Pope himself, working on the documents uh, the good documents in Vatican II, working on so many things. Then he finally goes into retirement after he's the head of the largest religious order in the world. Then he goes into retirement at his old age and says, okay, I'm going to be a chaplain. I'll just take care of this little convent of nuns in Rome. I'll work on, this, on the work on preparing myself for death. That's it. And that could have been it. But God chose to say, no, actually there's, <laughs> there's a need for you still. There's one more job for you to do. And it's going to be your biggest one yet. And it will be the hardest one. So we can see that if you read the life of Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, it's a wonderful thing to see what he did. But he understood this critical aspect that uh, the priestly life has to be guaranteed. If it's not guaranteed, if the priests do not work on their own sanctification, if the priests do not work on their the holiness of their mass, the divine office, their prayers together, the rosary together, the meditation together, their, their works of, of uh, let's say, uh, holding on to the priesthood and, and, and helping other priests and helping with the formation of priests. These are, these are critical. These are critical. As I say, there should be alarm bells going off. There should be absolute panic in the streets 
If you have less than one 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 hundredth of one percent of young men or young women, let's say in this country, going into the religious life, that's 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 part, that's real real food for thought. There, there should be absolute pandemonium with that type of statistic. My dear faithful, this this wonderful occasion for us, this fifty years on this this great feast day of all saints. What a better day to. What better day could we choose to have our anniversary celebration than we have all the saints and all the angels in heaven and the queen, the queen of angels and saints that we also celebrate today. It's something that Archbishop Lefebvre continually brought into his sermons, his conferences, and his talks about how Our Lady must be the one that we go to, that she's very appropriate for this current, let's say, problem or crisis or issue this combat that we are in, Our Lady is perfectly suited to that. Why do we say that? We think of Our Lady, the Mother of God, the Mother of mercy, of gentleness and love. Yes, this is all true. But because she loves God, because she loves our souls, it is her, her total love of God, her love in general, that, that makes her a combatant that makes her one that helps us in our combat. She is the one who crushes all heresies, the one who crushes the head of the serpent, that crushes the head of the devil. She is called the one terrible as an army drawn up in battle array. Is this the same mother of gentleness and mercy? Yes, but also the one who knows she must combat error. She must call out heresy and falsehood. Yes, of course. It is Our Lady who shows us the way, the most holy, gentle Virgin Mother who also combats for the good of the faith and the good of souls. All of this is, is not a contradiction. It's part of the very life of our faith that we are called, especially at Confirmation, to fight for our faith. Fight for the faith within your families. Fight for those young men and young women who... Uh, who might have a vocation. If God calls one out of every ten, that means a lot of persons are, are either blocking that vocation, they're refusing it, they're ignoring it, they're running away from it. It's possible, very possible, very likely. That God, in these days of neo-paganism, of such a great loss of the faith, is, is sending even more vocational graces He's, he's showering even more young women, young, uh, lay, young women and young men with, with the graces of uh, a religious vocation. It's very likely. But so many, because of this crisis, because of their own issues, because of their desire to be selfish, the desire to not be generous, so many are refusing or running away from this glorious life this life which Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre had said that we are unworthy servants, we are unprofitable servants, and yet God has chosen to spread the faith through the religious life, through young men, through young women, who say, you know what, I'm going to give up the cares of this world, I'm going to give myself back to the service of God. Yeah, it's, it's the way to convert the world, is the way to convert our countries, the way to convert even those within our families is more... Religious. Imagine, imagine that if you had not 10% in this country, the, if next year there was 1% of the young men and young women, 1% young men and young women who went to follow the religious life, 1%, there'll be 2,000 new religious. What could you do with 2,000 men and women dedicating their lives to the service of God? 2,000, that's only 1%. Imagine how quickly, within 20 years, you'd have Singapore be the newest, maybe one of the greatest of Catholic countries. What a wonderful thing. We think about what generosity does to a soul, the generosity of a young man, a young woman who says, you know, I could chase after money, I could chase after the pleasures of the world, I could chase after the success in this world, but, but God is calling God is calling me, perhaps. I need to research this. I need to look into this. That maybe this is a reality for me. This is my dear faithful. Let us pray, especially to our Lord in His sacred heart and our Lady in Her immaculate heart. 
to come to the help. And we pray for the continual growth of the Society of St. Pius X. We pray for the perseverance of those in the SSPX. And we pray, perhaps privately, as much as we would like to, to St. Marcel Lefebvre. He is not officially canonized. Maybe he never will be. It doesn't matter. Privately, we can pray to someone that under the guidance of our Lord and Our Lady, there may be more, more harvesters, more laborers in his vineyard. May St. Pius X pray for us. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.